let's consider the basics of geometric random variables. Our scenario, we're going to consider coin flips. Our coin will have probability of heads equal to P, where P is between 0 and 1 inclusive. So the probability of a tails is 1 minus P. For our geometric random variable X, we record the number of flips until our first heads appears. So, if we consider where our random variable is equal to n, in this case, our first heads appears on the nth flip, which means we have all tails leading up to that flip. So, that means I'm going to have n minus 1 tails and then a heads. So, if I want the probability for when a random variable is equal to n, probability of a tails is 1 minus p. I have n minus 1 of those, so we multiply to get 1 minus p to the n minus 1. Multiplying by the probability for the heads is to multiply by p. So this completely describes our probability distribution. Note if we have a fair coin, p is equal to 1 half, and then we have our probability where x is equal to n equal to 1 half to the nth power. Now, the facts we want to consider here. First, we have the cumulative probability distribution. So that's just going to be where probability of our random variable is less than or equal to n. That's going to be equal to 1 minus 1 minus p to the nth power. Then, for the mean or expected value of the random variable x, we have 1 over p. For its variance, we have 1 minus p over p squared. For the moment generating function, we have p e to the t over 1 minus 1 minus p times e to the t. Now, the main tools for showing our results are based on the geometric power series, hence geometric random variables. So if we have the variable x, it's restricted to the interval from minus 1 to 1. I consider the geometric power series 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on. On this region, series converges and sum is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Now, on this region, I can make a new series by taking the derivative term by term. and That'll converge to the derivative of the function on the other side. So we'll have, okay, apply the chain rule to this. We have 1 minus x to the minus 1, so its derivative is 1 over 1 minus x squared. And that's equal to the sum of the series 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared, and so on. If we apply it one more time, chain rule gives me 2 over 1 minus x quantity cubed. And that's equal to the sum of the series 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2x plus 4 times 3x squared, and so on. We could write that in summation notation as a series okay, going from n equals 2 to infinity, n, n minus 1, times x, n minus 2. So we'll need these three identities and what follows. Now, first we should verify that we have a probability distribution. So we want to show if we take the sum over all of our probabilities, that adds up to 1. Now we know we should split off the case where we have p equal to 0. So that's when there's no chance of getting a heads. So the mean and the variance will be undefined. Otherwise, okay, everything I use is going to be valid. Now, if I sum over these probabilities, okay, as so, you'll note we write out the first few terms. I could factor out a p. What's left over is going to be a geometric series where we're setting x equal to 1 minus p. 1 minus p is between 0 and 1, so this converges. So we take the sum, we have p times 1 over p, and that's equal to 1. So we, in fact, have a probability distribution. Now, how about the cumulative probability distribution? So if we evaluate this at the integer k, Okay, we're looking at probability of x less than or equal to k. So we're just taking the sum of these probabilities. I can write them out. I can factor out a p. Now here we don't have a series, it's just a finite sum. When we substitute this out, we're going to get this term here. The bottom's going to collapse to a p. They cancel and we get 1 minus 1 minus p to the k as promised. Now, 
for this substitution from here to here, we get that by just taking this sum, one plus x plus x squared, up through x to the k minus one. I multiply by one minus x. All the middle terms cancel in pairs, and we're left with one minus x to the k. So all I need to do is divide both sides by one minus x. As an example, let's suppose we have a fair coin. What's the probability that it takes more than five flips to get a heads? So we're looking for the probability that our random variable is greater than five. That's the same as one minus the probability that our random variable is less than or equal to five. We've just seen that this term is equal to one minus one minus p to the fifth, where p is equal to a half. So we get 1 32nd. Next, the formula for the mean. So recall, to get the mean, what we'll do is, we'll take each value for a random variable, so we'll call it n in this case, we wait with the probability of getting that value, then we just sum over all possible values. Now, if we write out the first few terms, when n is equal to one, the probability is p, when n is equal to 2, the probability is p times 1 minus p. When n is equal to 3, the probability is p times 1 minus p squared. And then so on. So we can factor out a p as before. Then what we're left with is power series as before. Okay, x is equal to 1 minus p, and that's definitely between minus 1 and 1. So this is going to converge. We know that the sum is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus x, quantity squared. So this is going to give me a 1 over p squared. We multiply by p, and we get a 1 over p as we have in our first board. Now, let's take a look at the graph. So what I want to do here is I want to plot okay, our mean, or expected value, against the p that we're using. So it's the probability of getting a heads. So okay, we can do some numerical checks here. You'll note when the probability of getting a heads is close to 1, so meaning it's almost certain, then we expect to only have one flip. So that would be if we had the probability exactly equal to one. On the other hand, the probability of getting a heads was unlikely, so that would be a very small number near zero. Then our expected value is gonna be very high. Okay, as we go into zero, it's gonna to go to infinity, which means we're gonna need more and more flips as that probability goes down. Next. Let's consider the variance. So it's gonna tell us the spread of a random variable about the mean. The formula we use, we're gonna take the second moment, so the expected value of x squared, subtract off the mean squared. We've already worked this out, so all the focus is on getting the second moment. Now, what do we do? We're gonna consider all values of our random variable, so in this case, called n. We're gonna use a square here so I'm going to take n squared, and then we're going to weight the probability of getting each value. Then we sum over all possible values. Now, if we write out the first few terms, probably not going to see a useful pattern. So instead, what we want to do is try to make use of our third identity on the previous board. So I want to try to get an n times an n minus 1 into the picture. To get that, I'm going to break up our n squared as n squared minus n and n. For the series on the right, we've already done all the work. Its sum is gonna be one over p. For this series, I wanna relate it to our series on the previous board. So let's write out the first few terms. So if I let n be equal to one, I get a zero. If I let n be equal to two, I have two times one times p times one minus p. If I take n equal to three, we're gonna have three times two times p times one minus p squared, and so on. We have enough here to see the pattern. So what I wanna do is, I'm gonna factor out a p times one minus p because we know we lead with two times one. So I have p times one minus p, and then what's left over is just gonna be our series from the previous board with x equal to one minus p. So we're gonna wind up with two times one over one minus x quad cubed, that's gonna give me two over p cubed, and then we're left with two minus two p over p squared. So if I want the second moment, we'll take 
2 minus 2p over p squared and add in our 1 over p. For the variance, we have the second moment, we have our mean squared, we take the difference. We put everything over a common denominator, we get 1 minus p over p squared. Note because p is between 0 and 1 inclusive, we verify that our variance is always greater than or equal to 0. Now, if we sketch the variance as a function of p, we interpret. So when p is equal to 1, we get 0. As p goes in to 0 from the right, the variance goes off to plus infinity. So what does this say? When p is equal to 1, and we're certain of getting a heads when we flip, the mean is going to be equal to 1, and there's no spread about the mean. Okay, we're always certain to get that 1, no other values. As p gets smaller, so as the probability of getting heads becomes less and less certain, the spread about the mean is going to get larger and larger. Now, we finish with the moment generating function. So how do we get this? It's going to be a function of t, some real number. We're going to take the expected value of the random variable e to the tx. So how do we do that? Same as before. We're to take all possible values of our random variable, x, call that n. The function we use is e to the tn, and we weight that with the probability of getting that value. And then we sum over all possible values. Now, to make this work, I'm going to split e to the tn into two pieces, e to the t and e to the tn minus 1. I put the e to the t with our p. I put the e to the t n minus 1 with the 1 minus p to the n minus 1. And that goes to the inside as an e to the t. Now, with this, we just work with as before. I write out the first few terms. We're going to factor out an e to the t p. And then what's left over is going to be a geometric series with e to the t, 1 minus p equal to x. Now, we have to choose our t carefully to make sure that our x is between minus 1 and 1. So it's going to limit the possible values of t that we can use. But that's not a problem. When we apply our series, we wind up with e to the tp times 1 over 1 minus 1 minus p e to the t as we had in the first board. As an application of the moment generating function, let's recover our mean and our second moment. So the recipe is, if I want the nth moment of our random variable x, take the nth derivative of its moment generating function and evaluate at zero. For our geometric random variable, okay, I'm going to take our moment generating function, I'm going to rewrite it. So I divide numerator and denominator by e to the t. These go away, or one turns into an e to the minus t, and I rewrite in this form here so that I can use the chain rule. Now, for the first derivative, chain roll, so the minus 1 comes down, drop the exponent to a minus 2, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside is just going to be e to the minus t, and I take the derivative of the exponent, which gives me a minus 1. So the minus 1s are going to cancel. We have our derivative here. If we evaluate at 0, e to the minus t just goes to 1, so it'll be left with p over p squared, or 1 over p, and that agrees with what we had before. For the second moment, we're just going to take the derivative of our first derivative. So we're going to be using the chain rule with the product rule. Okay, so we just work that out. I evaluate at 0. When we collect terms, we note that we get 2 minus p over p squared. That agrees with what we had before. So if I subtract off the mean squared, 1 over p squared, we get our variance of 1 minus p over p squared.